So we talked a bit about uh, storage in previous uh, sessions, but storage is limited. It's limited to your device alone. It's not backed up. It's got all sorts of limitations in terms of how you can query data and everything. So we offer something far more powerful in uh, the cloud storage uh, functionality. So to end that, essentially an object can be mapped into the cloud. So let's do something simple. Let's turn this button into a save button, which will insert an object into the cloud and create another button called retrieve. And we'll call this one retrieve. And we'll call this one save. And we'll add a new container underneath where all the retrieved objects can come. Okay, so this is this for destination. And we'll give it the layout of box layout Y as well. So when we retrieve data, we can retrieve it to there. So that's great. Now let's go to the designer where this will no longer work. And we can go back up. And we can go back here and define the action event for this and the action event for that. Both save and retrieve should be available to me. So that's it. So now let's take create an object to the cloud. To create an object to the cloud, the object is just an object that is stored in the codename one cloud. So we create one as such. Every cloud object has a type. We'll give it a type, and type is essentially like a class name of sort. So uh, I'll give it a type called uh, my object for this particular case. And I'm going to give it another uh, visibility uh, element. So the access, I can make it private, which means only I will be able to read this particular object. Notice that you have several access levels and every and uh, obviously to this particular user. A user is appropriately. So a cloud object is really uh, like a hash map in some regards. It has keys. It has values, but it's much more complex than that. It also has index elements. But let's start with the simple things. So set string, for instance, I can give it a, a my data, which is the key, and I can give it any value like a high world, for instance. But the thing is that if I want to query the object, I need an index value. So I need to set its index, uh, or one of its indexes, to something that's of any value. So uh, I can give it a value like this. Now, to understand this, let's go, let's create something a bit more elaborate, like first name. Let's call it like this. First name, shy, and surname, or family name if you're more used to that. Now, say I want to sort my name in a case-insensitive way. Uh, based on first name, last name. In that case, I'll obviously do uh, set the index value to shy, uh, like this. Uh, we might prefer to set it uh, in reverse, so the surname would take precedence. So in that case, I'll do this. For the second index, I can do up until 10 indexes. I can use them for query. I can use them uh, for sorting. And the reason it works like that is related to object storage. We use the big table algorithm that Google uses, which has a very, very fast and very scalable implementation on the server. Uh, and over there, you can only query by one index. So you need to prepare these 10 indexes in advance or change them as your application runs. 
to match what, uh, what you would like to query on in the future. But once you've picked the proper 10 indexes, queries would be remarkably fast and remarkably reliable. So we did these and that's all good and well. So now all we need to do in order to save this is go to the cloud storage uh, object. and get its instance and save the object. The next thing we need to do is commit. Now, the commit returns uh, an error code which if it differs from zero might mean an error. So in this case I'll just show an error dialog saying that there was an error. And all is well. So that did the commit. Now say we want to retrieve the data we have in the storage. So first thing we need to find uh, the retrieve retrieve this. And I'll remove all the components. That we have. Then uh, I need to query storage. So let's go back to the cloud storage instance and perform a query on it. Uh, I can use equals or less than or just sorted. So I just want to bring everything sorted based on first name, last name. So let's do that because that's a common use. So I need to. Uh, query the type. The type is my object. The index I'm searching on is index 1, which is the first name, last name, order. Uh, ascending, well, let's leave it like that. Uh, page is 0. I want the first page. I want the limit to be, say, 100 elements. And I want everything from the private access scope. Now, this is important. We can only uh, read from one scope at a time. This is mostly related to how things are essentially implemented. Uh, we need to catch the cloud exception here in case there was uh, an exception and remove uh, the logging stuff here. So in this case, we'll just do a Query error. And like that. So that's good. And this, if I remember correctly, returns uh, the actual cloud object array. So now we can just go over the CLDs here. Um, like that. No. Like that. And for every object, we'll just add it to the dest container. So label. And get the object's first name and just add it. So find dest c and component l. Like that. So that just retrieves the data from the cloud and places it uh, in place. Uh, That's not, not right. Okay. So let's press play and this works on the simulator. And now let's read data. Ah, one small thing I forgot. 
we need to obviously revalidate after adding. Or maybe even let's make it nice. Uh, let's make it animate the layout into place, which would be nice. So let's run this. Here we go. So I hope that explains a bit uh, of how cloud objects work and what you can do with them. You can store sets of cloud objects and query them. There's a special list model designed for cloud objects and lots of other features like that. I suggest you take a look in the developer guide to get a deeper understanding of what exactly you can do with cloud objects and cloud files. We also allow storing full files and uploading them into the cloud. So uh, hopefully this was educational for you and thanks for watching.